I'm Samuel Mok. I work as an information specialist at the University of Twente. These are my uh, contact details if you want to reach out. And today I'm going to tell you about uh, this guy here, the mus, the sparrow in Dutch, um, and what he has to do with Open Alex. So let's start with some background info, how I started this project, why, uh, what I want to achieve with it, and then I'm going to get into the details, technical details of it, and show you how it works. So, first off, uh, at the University of Twente, we have a repository, like many universities. It's also a research information system. It's using Elsevier's Pure, and uh, the main way that data gets into their research output, uh, research products, mainly are that the researchers who produce the research products, they add them themselves, um, mostly by getting metadata from Scopus, um, so they don't have to manually enter everything themselves, and then they enter it into the system. And this is then in turn validated, uh, checked uh, by our metadata specialist, our uh, back office from the library. Um, there are many other ways to add data to the system, but this, this is where most of our data comes from. Now, we enrich this data as well with data from other university systems, uh, HR, finance, etc. And then we use this data. So we use this internally for uh, reports, uh, monitoring, uh, various uh, visitations, and things like that. Uh, but we also have a public front-end, uh, research.20.nl, uh, which is also our green open access host. So uh, six months after the publication date, we will always openly, publicly share the PDF version of any research that we have in our repository. Um, so that basically means that we have like 99 to 100% of open access, uh, depending on how old all the papers are. We also have a public API, the OIA PMH endpoint, uh, which have, uh, lets others harvest our data. Um, this is mainly done by Open Air as a primary harvester. Um, that is uh, the Dutch um, research output is all gathered in Open Air, but also Open Alex directly uh, harvests this information from from our repository uh, but also from open air and it's very important for us that this endpoint does its job properly that the correct metadata is uh, is transferred along with the pdf etc to enable us to achieve that open access rate of 100 percent so there are a couple of issues with the current way of working uh, we miss some items because uh, research don't add them or scopus doesn't have some metadata etc uh, we're also very reliant, depending on Scopus and Elsevier in general, a lot. You know, it's a single source of information from a commercial supplier it costs us quite some money, and we have no true influence on what they have on data per item. Um, we also don't really know where our data ends up, how it ends up, where, and uh, how it's used, because we don't look at uh, what is coming back from the the database that ingests our data. So what do we think is a solution here is to close this loop. So here's a, a bit of a scheme, an example of the life cycle of metadata. An, an author makes a research product, a publisher puts the data into Crossref and Scopus, for instance, and then the author makes sure, uh, uses the metadata from Scopus to put it into our, our repository, our research information system. This is then harvested by Open Air, by Open Alex, uh, by others, and they also harvest each other. And then um, this purpley, a purple part here is missing. There is no connection between all those open repositories that use our data and us back again. And if we do add this, then of course we can check if the data is has propagated properly through the entire system. And if not, we can change things in our system, uh, how we registered or use the enriched metadata we get back to improve our uh, metadata as well, which will hopefully end up recursively improving everything else. So what do we need then? We need some way to ingest all this data uh, compared with our own 
uh, and do that in a way that also uh, the bit less technical staff is able to do this. So what I created was ISMUS, as I said. MUS uh, stands for Metadata Unification System, which is the tool that I've built in collaboration with our library staff um, to produce something that can be used for this purpose. So here, uh, the next slides is, are about the detailed technical implementation of the system. And uh, I won't go into every single detail, um, but uh, just to give you an idea of how it works. So what I do, first of all, is I retrieve the raw data as raw as possible with little, uh, uh, as little additions or changes as possible. I pull them from the APIs uh, or whatever and then store them in a NoSQL database just as raw data. Um, so OpenAlex is my primary source for this because um, the structure of the data, the cleanup of the data of OpenAlex is uh, pretty good in my uh, experience. And also um, the unique identifiers that OpenAlex uses for all the different entities are very helpful to also structure my own data. Um, I then retrieve all the works by the University of Twente, for instance, uh, for certain years, and then I have a collection of work items. I do the same for our repository, so I use the public endpoint to gather all the data so I can compare um, what we have here uh, to open Alex. Here I try to match them, so I have then the institute items with open Alex IDs where possible, and those that do not match are either things that aren't indexed by open Alex or there's something wrong with the metadata or it's not uh, harvested by open Alex. There are things that we need to look into in any case. I don't do that just for works. I also, for every work, you of course in open Alex have authorships and then you have authors linked to that. And for every author in the data set, I pull them all and all the authors that are linked to our institute, uh, the University of Twente, I try to match them with data from our institute to enrich the data. So uh, some of that is in our public uh, repository endpoint, but also I use, for instance, a web scraper to harvest our staff pages um, because the API is not working at the moment, but otherwise I would have done that. Um, then I have so employee data, enriched employee data with an open Alex ID for an author, so I can combine that later on. And the same I do with the journal browser, which is a tool uh, we use in the Netherlands to showcase uh, all the deals that we have with publishers for open access publishing. Um, so I, I link that with sources, with journals, and so on and so forth for the other items where possible. Then, once I have that, that's my base data set, and then I use the unique identifiers, titles, whatever I want to search through other um, other databases like Crossref, like OpenAir Datasite, Orchid to retrieve information from there and link it to these items by using OpenAlex IDA or an Orchid or whatever. I always try to use the OpenAlex IDA as a primary unique key if possible. There are a lot more APIs possible, also commercial uh, ones, of course, and some of them I have implemented in my system, some not, uh, but this is a work in progress. Um, the ideal goal would be to have them all possible uh, as implementation, and then the user can select which one to run. Then I want to structure this data because now we uh, just have a big batch of raw data with a couple of uh, links in between, but that's of course not really that useful to showcase the data or to uh, to properly uh, see if everything is going well. So I combine this data into uh, entities. I enrich it from the different sources, uh, clean everything up that's incorrect or what doesn't fit our workflows. I disentangle things that shouldn't be together, etc. And then I turn it into a SQL database. As you see here, this is a bit of a rough scheme, a SQL scheme of my database. Um, this is highly um, similar to Open Alex, but I add some items and a couple of different linkages um, to really fit my use case. But the basics are very, very similar to Open Alex. And all of this is then the back end of my front end 
uh, the metadata unification system for the user, um, which looks like this. Um, and it runs on uh, on a server. Uh, you can access it at mus.samamok.cc. The source code is openly available on my GitHub. Um, and um, for this presentation, I have added a username and password for a demo user. Um, so feel free to check it out. Let's uh, quickly show you how it then works in practice. So here you can see the live version. Um, you can uh, search for DOIs here and then it will look it up. And if it's already in the system, it shows it, but you can also uh, look for authors and see all the works of an author or things like that. Um, it, you can live pull uh, items and add them to the database, but most of the items should already be in the database here. You can then search through the database here by using a filter system. And there's many more ways to filter, but these are the most used ones at the moment. And then you get lists like this with the most important information, um, page, uh, with pages, uh, you can sort them, etc. You can export this as a CSV, for instance, uh, for your report. Uh, this includes a lot more data than what is shown here. And then you can open a single item uh, or you can bookmark an item by pressing this button and then it will be added to your bookmark list. And you can also open the item itself to look at the details. And as you can see here, we have a nice interface to show this um, with all the uh, enriched data. And this is structured in a way that's useful for our lab library to use. Um, you can also see here if an item is also found in pure in our repository. You can also look at what I got from our public endpoint uh, to see uh, the differences. This is the way that we currently use it. And you can also grab all the raw data. So what I retrieve from all the APIs, etc., for uh, a single paper and download it as a JSON file. I also have an API running, so it's also possible to use uh, to, uh, to uh, retrieve machine readable uh, data from this set. Um, so that's it. There's a, there's a couple of more options and ways to play around with it, um, but that's up to you to figure out if you'd like. So what's next then? Um, for the University of Twente, I want to finish up this system uh, along with the library, um, do lots of testing to see if it works, fix errors, etc., and to make it a proper tool to use for my colleagues and I. And then I also am collaborating or in talks with um, a couple of other researchers or developers in the Netherlands, like for instance, Rickgraph and Ucubasis Data Hub, which I've linked here. Uh, they are developing similar tooling for a bit different use cases, but we're very uh, aligned at the moment. And the Netherlands uh, open science programs like the Open Research Initiative, the ORI, had a kickoff this week and that also really aligns with uh, similar goals. So we're looking if we can group this together and maybe work on a national level for some kind of tooling like this, uh, where what we have in mind is something like a wizard that helps you set up uh, something like I've sh shown you for our university, but then for your own, uh, where you can pick where you want to pull the data and how it links together, and then the tool will do that for you. But that's way into the future. Now, that was it. Thank you for looking at this video. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you want to chat, collaborate, share your thoughts, whatever. Um, these are all my uh, information, contact information. And uh, you can try the system yourself at mus.samamok.cc. So have fun and uh, hope to hear from you if you're interested.